guys, this is Anthony Carey, inventor of the Cortex and Cortex Sit, and I have Omar with me today that's going to help me show you some strategies around hamstring mobilization. Now, we all know that the hamstrings work in three planes of motion, although we tend to focus both from a rehab and a mobility standpoint just in the sagittal plane, front to back. We're going to use the Cortex to expose the hamstrings to both length and tension, so they're going to be lengthening and loading at the same time, and that helps build resiliency. So both from a mobility and a resiliency standpoint on the rehab and recovery side, we're going to be able to assist with that through the motions of Cortex by exposing all those different vectors that Cortex provides. So we're going to give you four different examples, four different ways that you can implement these moves for your clients or patients. The key principles is we want to take the slack out of the tissue. So what I'm going to have Omar do right now is he's going to dorsiflex and contract his quad. So first step puts a little pretension. From there, he's going to hinge forward at his hip. That's going to increase. He is now going to be in what we call a self-selected moderate or medium degree of tension or stretch. So little, medium, or lot, Omar says that's a good medium for me. So once we take the slack out of the tissue, now all those different fibers are more responsive or receptive to all the different vectors we have. So he's already on a stretch. So what we would do first, and I can assist him at the beginning, but ultimately we want the client or patient to do this on their own because we want them to neuromuscularly be able to control that motion. So we're going to do sagittal plane first. He's just going to go back and forth. And notice that what we're after here is an oscillating motion. So there's your traditional sagittal. Right away, he'll feel an increase in the tension on the hamstring. Then what we'll do is we'll do roughly 10 reps of those. Then he'll go frontal plane. So now, he remember, pre-stretch is present. He's going to go side to side. So now we're going this way on the hamstring. The pelvis is moving over the, relative to this fixed femur. And then the biggie for this one, for most people, they're, we're really much tighter on our lateral hamstring. So now he's going to take his right foot and he's going to point his toes or internally rotate this way, which relatively internally rotates this hip. And now he's got that really going to light up the lateral aspect of his, his whole hip and, and posterior leg. And again, so he can go in and out of it or he can position it there and then repeat the sagittal plane. So what will happen here is our client or our patient is ultimately going to start to self-select. Where do they like it, need it the most? And they can go from there and work independently of us. Okay, now we have Omar in a half kneeling position. For a lot of people, this is more comfortable, or if you're already doing, down here doing your two joint hip flexor, you can transition right into the hamstring. So we're gonna have Omar put his left heel out again. All the principles are the same. Dorsiflex, quad contract, hip hinge. It's gonna create a self-selected moderate rotate, or moderate length or stretch up here. And from here, he's gonna rock back and forth. So we, what we have is a fixed leg or our ground-based leg here being influenced by what the cortex is doing. So again, we can go 10 sagittal, we can go 10 frontal, and then we can also introduce the rotational aspect. Whether we're gonna go in and out of it, in and out of it, and notice the oscillations. Our nervous system is very receptive to the oscillations. That will make the tissue more compliant. Versus big burst of turns or big burst of ballistic movements, we stay away from the tissue threshold with that. And that down regulates the nervous system, making it more compliant to the length that we're trying to introduce. OK, now this third position, for some people, this is actually more comfortable. We might even use this with some of our, our senior or aging populations that prefer not getting down on the ground. And this actually could be a great way to introduce them to the motions of cortex initially so they can see what it can do. So here, the cortex is what's going to be doing the moving. And the involved leg, obviously, is on the cortex. So Omar, again, is going to dorsiflex contract the quad, get that pre-length, then he's gonna hip hinge, so he's got a nice length through the back side of his body here on the posterior aspect, and here he's gonna drive the cortex with the involved leg. So as he moves away, obviously increase in sagittal length, then he has the option from there of going into the frontal plane again, and no problem with me in this initially assisting somebody with this, back and forth. And then what's a little bit different about what we could do with this one is we can actually do a little bit of circumduction. So he's going to stir the pot with his foot. That introduces a little bit of all the different vectors that are possible there because he gets a little rotation, he gets a little frontal, he gets a little sagittal, all of it's going on here. Okay, guys, on this fourth one, what we're going to do with Omar here is he's actually going to be in a bilateral symmetrical stance here, and we're going to do a version of the yoga countertop stretch. And what he's going to do is put his hands on the wall. So now the hands are fixed on an external stability point here. He's going to still, he's going to extend and 
He's only dorsiflexed to where he can be, but then he's going to hip him. So again, he's going to create his own pre-stretch here. And from here, we're actually going to rotate the pelvis, or rotate the cortex rather, which gets the pelvis moving a little bit farther and faster than the femur. So he's going to start to get a little bit of a different stimulation to the hamstrings this way. The bonus with this one, kind of the extra that you get for free, is look at all this great thoracic lateral flexion and rotation, these type one motions that he's getting up here as he goes through this motion with the hands fixed on the wall. So he's getting all that hamstring stuff same, but now he's in a bilateral stance, which is a little bit different from before where we uncoupled the hips to get after it. Let us know what you think. Hope to hear from you soon. Thank you.